episode of Fight or Flight. Today I'm taking a thorough look at the Aerosoft Airbus and I'll take you through a real-world Austrian Airlines flight from Vienna International Airport to London Heathrow. I was personally on this flight just a few weeks ago and thought it was only fitting that I recreate it here. The focus of the Aerosoft Airbus is very much on the day-to-day -day pilot operations. You won't find the same level of simulation as PMDG's NGX, but you may be surprised at just how deep the Aerosoft Airbus really is. The Airbus paradigm is an interesting one, and I frequently fly the Airbus to bring some variety to my flights. You get a lot of bang for your buck if you choose the bundle option, as this gives you the 318, 319, 320 and 321. With all four models in your hangar, you'll have all worldwide destinations pretty much covered. We're in the A320 today, but everything you see here can be applied to any other model. Our route takes us out of Austria, through the Czech Republic, across Germany and through Belgium. After a quick hop across the North Sea, we'll begin our approach at Lamborn into London Heathrow. We've got our flight planned in PFPX and our Navigraph charts loaded into PDF Kneeboard, so let's get to it. The first thing we're going to want to do is open the exit and cargo doors. Then we'll move on to the load fuel page. There are basically two ways of loading up the Airbus. One way is to use the included Aerosoft fuel planner to generate a load sheet which we can load from here. My preferred method however is to enter the figures manually given to us by an external flight planner like PFPX. We're flying 85 passengers to Heathrow today with 1670 kilos of cargo and 6810 kilos of fuel. We can cross-reference the calculated takeoff weight with our flight plan to make sure that we haven't made any mistakes. Don't worry if the numbers aren't bang on, just make sure that they don't vary too much. We can ignore this centre of gravity number. The developers have stated that this figure serves only as a reminder and doesn't have any effect on the flight model. We'll start the boarding process and move on to the left MCDU. Confirm that we have the correct nav data cycle loaded and bring up the init page. We're flying from Vienna International Airport, Lima Oscar Whiskey Whiskey, to London Heathrow, Echo Golf Lima Lima. We'll load the route generated by PFPX earlier to save time. Flight number is OS461. Cost index is 35 and cruise altitude of flight level 380. Now we'll move on to the flight plan page and select our departure and arrival. We're departing Vienna, runway 34, via the DTIS-1 Delta departure. We won't be flying a star into Heathrow, instead we'll fly directly to Lamborn and select the ILS-27 left approach. I'll go into the reasons why when we're up in the air. Let's just quickly slew through our route to make sure everything looks in order. The discontinuity before the approach is normal as that's when we'd request clearance from ATC. We can clear that now and confirm with insert. We'll skip the radio nav page and go back to init page B. We'll enter our zero fuel weight and release fuel from the flight plan. It's generally not a good idea to alter the centre of gravity, so we'll leave it as it is. It's worth noting that after we start engine number one, in its page B will become unavailable and we'll have to rely on the aptly named fuel prediction page. Next up, performance. The only mandatory entry we need to make is the takeoff flap setting. 
Generally, you'll be using flaps 2 most of the time. Flaps 1 is used for high altitude runways where brake energy could be a factor. And flaps 3 is used for short runways where you want the shortest possible takeoff roll. We have our V speeds calculated and our flex takeoff temp. Flex temp is basically a D rated thrust and we'll use that today as the runway at Vienna is nice and long. We'll enter 5000 feet as transition altitude from the chart. Now's a good time to set the horizontal stabilizer trim to up 0.8 so we don't forget. In the bottom left we can see thrust reduction and acceleration altitude. We can adjust these numbers if we want to perform a noise abatement procedure. At the moment they're both set to 1500 feet plus airfield elevation, which at Vienna is 600 feet. Let's change the acceleration altitude to 3000 feet plus elevation. What this means is that we'll initially climb to 1500 feet with takeoff thrust at which point we'll reduce the thrust levers to the climb detent. At 3000 feet we'll accelerate to green dot speed and the Airbus will transition to the climb phase. Still with me? Don't worry, it sounds more complicated than it is. At acceleration altitude we'll enter the climb phase. We can perform this in managed or selected mode. We could enter the zero flap speed into the climb page but we'll talk about that another time. We'll enter the cruise phase when we hit flight level 380. We'll enter the descent phase a little before top of descent and approach around 10 miles before our destination. We'll make sure we fill in the required information before we start the descent. Finally, we have a go around phase in the event that we need it. Let's take a look at the prog page. Our selected cruise altitude should be roughly equal to the optimal altitude and less than the recommended max. Everything looks good. The last thing we need to do is select a secondary flight plan and copy active. Think of this as a backup in case you mess up the primary flight plan at some point. We'll return to the fuel prediction page and set up the rest of the flight deck. Boarding is complete, so let's close all the doors and remove the jetway. Switch to the overhead and check the seatbelt signs are off and the emergency lights are armed. The anti-ice is off and the cabin pressure is auto. We can double check this with the ECAM pressure page. Landing elevation should display auto. For the packs we'll select low as there are less than 115 passengers on board. If it was a really hot day we could switch this to high. Switch on all the fuel pumps and perform the engine and APU fire tests. Now we'll switch on the APU then tune the Active Sky Next ATIS for Vienna. Lima, Oscar, whiskey, whiskey, airport information, Delta, one, zero, two, zero, Zulu, weather, wind, three, three, five, at eight, visibility, one, zero, sky clear, temperature, two, one, dew point, one, one, QNH, one, zero, two, two, advise on initial contact that you have information, Delta, Lima, Oscar, whiskey, whiskey, airport information, Delta. After entering the QNH at Vienna, it's time to set up the FCU. Confirm that the flight director is active and set your preferred nav display. Let's talk a little bit about the Airbus way of doing things. There are basically two modes, managed and selected. Think of managed as automatic mode and selected as manual mode. Anytime you see dashed lines and a solid circle, this indicates the aircraft is in managed mode and is taking data from the flight management guidance system or FMGS. The speed, heading and altitude selectors are two-way switches. Left click to push and right click to pull. If you're flying along in manage mode and wish to engage heading select, you'll select your heading and then pull the selector switch. To return back to manage mode, simply push the selector. 
Think of it as pulling control towards you and pushing control back to the Airbus. We'll leave speed and heading in manage mode. There are no altitude restrictions for our departure and no ATC, so let's go ahead and select our cruise altitude of 38,000 feet and push the selector for manage mode. While we're here, let's also talk about the thrust levers as they're different to what you will find on a Boeing. The thrust levers allow the pilot to select from a number of detents. We have the idle detent, climb detent, flex detent, and toga detent. Takeoff thrust is selected via flex or toga. Upon reaching thrust reduction altitude, the PFD will announce lever climb. This is the pilot's cue to reduce the thrust levers to the climb detent. Once the levers are in climb detent, there is no reason to adjust them any further until you enter the flare at your destination. This is extremely important. Once again, after selecting the climb detent, do not touch the thrust levers until you land. Once you're familiar with the selected and managed mode and the thrust lever detent system, you're well on your way to mastering the Airbus way of flying. We'll quickly check the STS page of the ECAM to make sure it displays normal and engage the parking brake if you haven't already done so. This would be the time we would get clearance from ATC for push and start. Then we can switch the external power off and make our first FS2 crew call. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. Please disconnect external power. Roger, disconnecting the GPU. Let's go through the departure briefing with our first officer and switch the seatbelt signs and APU bleed on. Are you ready for the takeoff brief? Go ahead. Okay, we have no MEL issues today. I will be the pilot flying. It will be a standard takeoff using noise abatement departure procedure 1. And we will be flexing to 6, 7 degrees. We will use config 2 for takeoff. The runway condition is dry. As for anti ice, it's not required. The packs will be on. We will use standard calls today. At or below 100 knots, I'll reject for any warnings. Below V1, I will only reject for an engine failure, a fire of any kind, a configuration warning, or anything I deem will adversely affect the safety of the aircraft. I will reject the takeoff by calling stop. If you could monitor that the auto brakes have activated and that the spoilers have deployed. Once we stop, if there's a fire, I'll position that side of the aircraft to be downwind and we'll evacuate through the open side. I'll advise the cabin and you talk to ATC. Above V1, we'll take the aircraft into the air, sort it out there, and decide if we need to return to the airfield. If you notice anything can miss during the takeoff roll, please notify me. Any questions? That's checked and no questions. Takeoff brief complete. Captain, the GPU is now disconnected. Before start procedure. OK. Before start checklist to the line. Before start checklist down to the line. Cockpit preparation. Completed. Completed. Gear pins and covers. Removed. Signs. On. Adders. Nav. Fuel quantity. 6,800 kilograms. Takeoff data. Set. Baro ref. 1022 set. One, zero, two, two, set. Before start checklist completed to the line. Before start checklist below the line. Before start checklist below the line. Windows and doors. Closed. Closed. Beacon. On. Thrust levers. Idle. Parking brake. Set. Before start checklist complete.
Once we begin the pushback, we'll switch the engine mode selector to ignition and start engine two. When we see an N2 of 50% in the ECAM display, we'll go ahead and start engine one. After start procedure, check. Flaps two. Flight controls check. Ready. Full up. Full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral. After start checklist. After start checklist, anti-ice, off, ECAM status. Take off no blue. Pitch trim. 0 0.8 set. Rudder trim. 0. After start checklist complete. Clear on the left. Clear on the right. Brake check. Ready. Hi there, flight deck. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Captain, the cabin is secure. Let's go over the takeoff procedure as the steps happen quite quickly. After performing the checklists, I'll line up on the runway. I'll advance the thrust levers to flex detent and you'll hear two clicks. At VR, we'll rotate and bring up the gear. Standard Airbus SOP dictates the autopilot should be engaged between 1 and 500 feet if SRS is available. 
At 1500 feet, you'll see lever climb displayed on the PFD, so we'll reduce the thrust levers to the climb detent and leave them there for the duration of the flight. At 3000 feet, the Airbus will accelerate to climb speed, which is 250 knots by default. If it sounds confusing, then don't worry, it'll become second nature soon enough. Before takeoff checklist to the line. Before takeoff checklist down to the line. Flight controls. Checked. Checked. Flight instruments. Checked. Checked. Briefing. Confirmed. Flap setting. Config 2. Config 2. V1, VR, V2, flex temp. V1, 121, VR, 130, V2, 131. V1 is 1, 2, 1. V rotate is 1, 3, 0. V2 is 1, 3, 1. And for the flex temp, we have 6, 7 degrees. ATC. Set. ECAM memo. Takeoff no blue. Before takeoff checklist completed to the line. Cabin crew, seats for departure. Before takeoff checklist below the line. Before takeoff checklist below the line. Cabin crew. Advised. TCAS. TA. Engine mode selector. Approaching. Three. Normal. Four. Packs. On. Before takeoff checklist complete. Takeoff. Three, Check. Four. Man flex. Thrust set. SRS. Checked. 100 knots. V1. Rotate. Positive rate of climb. Gear up. Gear up. Flaps one. Flaps one. Gear up. Flaps zero. Flaps zero. Set standard. Standard cross checked. Passing flight level zero five zero. Now. After takeoff checklist to the line. After takeoff checklist down to the line. Landing gear. Up. Flaps. Retracted. Packs. On. After takeoff checklist completed to the line. After takeoff checklist below the line. After takeoff checklist below the line. Baro ref. 
Standard set. Standard set. After takeoff checklist complete. And that's the hard part over with, at least for the takeoff phase. I wouldn't normally wait so long for the after takeoff checklists, but as the transition altitude is relatively low, I thought I'd wait a little longer to perform them all together. We're now fully established in the cruise and we've just crossed the border into Germany. Let's take a look at some optional features available to us to make our lives a little easier. We'll use some features of the FMGS to increase our situational awareness. We can use the left MCDU to draw range rings around selected fixes that will show up on the nav display. We'll be able to see at a glance how far away we are from any given point. We're going to enter three range rings for runway 27 left at Heathrow. We'll enter one ring at top of descent, another ring 10 miles out as a reminder that we're starting our approach, and a final one 4 miles out. At this point we should be fully configured for landing. I know of at least one real world airline that uses these range rings as part of their standard operating procedure, but I'll go into that in a future video. First, we'll input the range ring for our top of descent. The FMGS has already calculated this for us as seen by the hockey stick on the nav display, but it doesn't hurt to double check the calculation. A good rule of thumb is that you need three times your altitude in distance in order to descend. So, we'll take our flight level of 380, knock the zero off so we have 38, and multiply 38 by three. That gives us 114. This means we should begin our descent around 114 miles from Heathrow. We haven't accounted for wind or any other factors, but 114 should be pretty close. Click one of the LSKs on the left of the MCDU, then hit the Fix Info button in the top right. Enter the EGLL27L Fix. We don't need a radial, but let's enter 114 in the radius we'll see a rain circle that roughly intersects the top of descent point calculated by the FMGS. Now we'll go ahead and enter two more range rings at 10 miles and 4 miles using the same procedure. This gives us a nice reminder of how we should be configured once we hit these range rings in the nav display. Again, go into the fix info page enter the fix and enter a radius. One more thing I wanted to talk about is holds. I mentioned earlier that we're flying directly to Lambourne to start the approach into Heathrow. We're going to imagine that ATC is going to ask us to hold at Lambourne due to heavy traffic. Let's bring up the approach chart and have a quick look. From the chart, there's a holding pattern at Lambourne which is known as Tawny for this procedure. The inbound course is 264 degrees with an altitude of 7000 feet and a speed of 220 knots. We can take this information and set up a hold in the MCDU. In the flight plan page, find the LAM waypoint, select it, and click hold. Enter 264 for the inbound course and L for the turn. Go back to the temporary flight plan and click insert. Now we have a hold set up in the flight plan that the aircraft will automatically follow. We may have to enter selected mode to meet the altitude and speed restrictions in the hold as I haven't had much luck entering these restrictions directly into the MCDU. When ATC clears us to leave the hold, we'll hit the exit LSK and the Airbus will automatically continue along the flight plan. Don't forget that the range rings and holding patterns are entirely optional. 
feel free to skip them if you're just starting out with the Airbus. Now you're free to sit back, relax and enjoy the scenery. We'll talk again before top of descent. We're just passing over the coast of Belgium now and we'll shortly be reaching top of descent so let's get the weather information from Active Sky next and enter what we can into the approach page in the MCDU. Echo Golf, Lima, Lima, Airport Information, Sierra 1250, Zulu weather, wind 230, at 10, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature 232.8, QNH 1022, horizon initial contact. Echo Golf, Lima, Lima, Airport Information, Sierra 125. Transition altitude is 6,000 feet. Minimum decision altitude is 280 feet. And we'll go for a flaps 3 landing. Now we'll perform the approach brief for the first officer, set medium auto brake, and enter our approach altitude of 2,500 feet in the FCU. Are you ready for the approach brief? Okay. Okay. We will be arriving by ATC vectors. As for the approach, we can expect the ILS. Landing runway condition is dry. Anti-ice is not required. We will use config 3 for landing. Auto brake, we will use the medium setting. The packs will be on. And for the MDA, it's 2, 8, 0, feet. Any questions? That's checked. And uh, no questions. Approach brief complete. We're coming up to 20 miles before our calculated top of descent, so let's trigger the descent phase by pushing the altitude selector in on the FCU. Remember, don't touch those thrust levers. Leave them in climb and let the Airbus manage the descent. We've just crossed the North Sea coast into England and we're about 20 miles from Lambourne where we'll enter the holding pattern. Once we pass Gilda, the holding pattern will be drawn on the navigation display. Let's go ahead and select 7,000 feet on the FCU and pull the selector to engage selected mode so we can keep up with the numbers on the chart. We'll go into selected speed mode once we begin the turn. Flight level 100. At this point, the Airbus will continue flying the hold until we run out of fuel or we decide to exit the hold. We're about to turn onto the inbound leg, so let's imagine ATC has cleared us for the approach. 
Simply select the exit LSK to clear the hold. The Airbus will then fly the shortest route back to Lambourne and follow the flight plan. We'll set the altitude back to 2500 as a reminder and engage manage mode before we hit Lambor. We can go ahead and select manage speed mode now to get us to Lambor a little quicker. Approach checklist. Approach checklist. Briefing. Confirmed. Ecamp status. Checked. Seat belts. On. Barrow ref. 1013 set. 1013 set. MDA decision height. 280 set. Engine mode selector. Normal. Approach checklist complete. The last thing we need to do before passing the initial approach fix is to activate then confirm the approach phase in the MCDU. We'll set the local Q&H once we reach transition altitude. Hi there, flight deck. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Captain, the cabin is secure. 1022, set. One, zero, two, two, cross-checked, passing 4,000. We can see Heathrow off to our one o'clock position and the range rings we generated earlier mark our 10 and four miles from the runway threshold. We'll extend the first stage of flaps and engage approach mode on the FCU to intercept the localizer and glide slope and we'll push the LS button to display the ILS deviation. Flaps 1. Speed checked. Flaps 1. Thousand to go. This would be a good time to engage the second autopilot if you wanted to perform an auto land, but I'll put her down manually today and switch off the autopilot at around 1000 feet. Flaps two. Speed checked. Flaps two. Gear down. Gear down. Two thousand five hundred. Set go around altitude two thousand. Altitude two thousand. Flaps three. Speed checked. Flaps three. 
The only thing left to do is to perform the landing checklist and land safely at Heathrow. Cabin crew, seats for landing. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Cabin crew. Advised. Auto thrust. Speed. ECAM memo. Landing no blue. Landing checklist complete. One thousand. One thousand. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. One hundred above. above. Two hundred. Minimum. Minimum. Landing. Check. One hundred. Seventy. Sixty. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Retard. Ten. Five. Spoilers. Reverse green, D cell. Seventy knots. And we're down. We just need to vacate the runway, taxi to our stand, and shut down the aircraft. As I mentioned at the start, the Aerosoft Airbus is not as extensively modelled as some of the other big name add-ons, but there's more than enough fidelity to keep you busy. It would be nice if things like failures would be modelled, and there are still a couple of minor issues with the MCDU that could be improved. I hope you enjoyed the video, and maybe learned one or two things in the process. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. Take care, goodbye, and see you next time.